I'm Glenn Catamore. I've been working with Commvault Presales now for about 10 years. And I'd like to talk to you about trying to avoid vendor lock-in in the cloud and why that's a good idea. It used to be that servers were just something that sat in a computer room and you could go and touch them. It was very easy to sort out. Nowadays, it's increasingly likely that you are deploying solutions on-premise, in the cloud, in multiple clouds. It's important you choose a backup product that fits in with this multi-cloud approach. If you only have a solution that supports, say, three or four different hypervisors, then it's going to affect your business plans and what you can develop. Commvault supports about 19 different hypervisors currently, so you can choose where the business wants to go and be sure that the Commvault solution will fit around it whilst providing a single pane of glass to be able to view and protect your data. And on top of that, Commvault provides flexibility so we can do things like protect the data in VMware, restore the VM into Azure or AWS, or back it up from Azure and restore it onto Hyper-V. Very flexible, very easy, no third party tools, just works. Looking at um, how we protect cloud solutions and in particular multi-cloud solutions, this is the Commvault Command Center, which is a high-level dashboard for Commvault. So in this case, we're interested in virtual solutions. Um, so we click on solutions on the left and then virtualization. And we get a list of all the different hypervisors that are configured on this configuration of Commvault. So we can see that we've got VMware vSense, so we've got OpenStack, Hyper-V, Amazon, Nutanix, lots of different options. I can group VMs together so that they're perhaps done by location and for operational reasons, or we can look at virtual machines just on a VM level. Click on the name of the server and off we go. We can see it's on vCenter, we can see what operating system, how big it is, when it was last protected, things like that. And on the right here, we have a calendar type entry which shows us all the dates that we have backups from. So if I click, for example, on the 6th there, we can see that we've got backups from several different times. If I click on the 8.15 p.m. one, I can then hit the Restore button, and we'll say, what sort of restore would you like? Now, in a live environment, we might want to do different types of recoveries, like we recover individual files. But for this example, we want to talk about recovering between clouds. So I want to say, recover a full virtual machine. So click on that and it will come up with the restore options box saying, okay, I'm going to restore it to vCenter. But if I hit that drop down, we can actually see, well, I could restore it to Nutanix or Amazon or Azure or Hyper-V or OpenStack. And it's just a question of deciding where I want it to be recovered. And then the rest of the configuration you go through on the next few slides and you click recover and off it goes, it will bring back your VM. There's no third party tools, we can recover the VMs into different hypervisors just from this GUI as I've just shown.